Hi guys and welcome to my review of the Lenovo ThinkPad Helix 2. It is a very versatile convertible with Core M made for the business market. And to show you how versatile it actually is, let's check the modes we've got. The first would be the tablet mode, nothing that special yet. But with the keyboard dock you also get the ultrabook mode. And the nice thing here is, you can just turn the tablet around, plug it in this way and have three additional modes. The first would be the presentation mode, then you also get the tent mode and another tablet mode. And you might think, why another tablet mode? Because it almost doubles the battery life. That's it for now. Let's check each component first now. Let's take it off. Here we have the tablet part. You might think the bezels are a bit big, but since the device with 11.6 inches widescreen format is quite wide and with 760 grams a little bit on the heavy side, you will know to appreciate the big bezels to hold on to. The one on the top and bottom could though be a little bit smaller. In terms of build quality, I would wish for it not to be able to be bent that easy. We have a magnesium back, so it should be stable, it shouldn't be the issue, but still. On the back we have the fingerprint reader, a pair of stereo speakers and the webcam here. Otherwise, on the left side we have a microphone, here we have the port for the charging, on the bottom we have the whole mechanism for the dock, and on the right side we have micro HDMI, under this flap we have USB 3.0, under this flap we have micro SIM and micro SD card. Both of these flaps are a little bit flimsy, but still, yeah, it could have been done better. Here we have the volume rocker and the headphone jack. That's it for the keyboard, for the tablet right now. Let's check the keyboard now a little bit closer. We also get on the back ports. Here we have a Kensington lock, mini display port, USB 3.0 with always on, and the port for the charging, that's pretty much it. On the bottom though, we have another pair of stereo speakers. Let's get a bit closer and check the keyboard and I will zoom in for that. I have to say, I'm really, really impressed with this keyboard for many obvious reasons. First of all, we have a high amount of treble, which is really nicely dampened. Also the keyboard, as you see, the typing is very quiet. The layout is great, the buttons are nicely shaped and you get a great tactile feedback while typing. So this was the best typing experience I've ever had so far. I have to say though this is the first ThinkPad I've used, but I have to say this is the best keyboard I've ever used. As for the trackpad, the good thing here is we have those three buttons. If you want to use them, you also get here this track point. The Trackpad itself could be a little bit less sticky from time to time, but therefore it recognizes everything well. Multi-finger gestures are no problem. And there's one thing I wanted to show off when it comes to the software of this trackpad. Let's quickly turn on the device. And the really nice thing here is the very customizable software because you get options to customize pretty much everything of the trackpad. The gestures, the clicks, the scrolling. If there's one option you would like to see, it is pretty much sure that it's there. Let's check the quality of the display now because the only thing I have to say about the build quality, we have a good amount of ports. The design is quite nice, but with 1.7 kilos as a whole, it is a little bit on the heavy side and could be a little bit more sturdy in terms of flexibility. But yeah, as for the display, 1080p, 11.6 inches and a 16 by 9 ratio. I would prefer maybe 16 by 10, but still. It is very sharp, no issues with scaling. Things can get a little bit small from time to time, but that's pretty much it. As for the maximum brightness, it can get very bright, it can get also very dim. One thing about the brightness though, above a level of 80%, one to uh, above to, to, to 100, it can be almost blinding your eyes because it's quite an aggressive white, as you can maybe see here. It is a little bit too cold, and but, but the thing is, if you are below maybe 70%, this white and also colors get a bit dull and grayish. So I was always between 70 and 80%. That was for me the sweet spot. Everything above was almost almost too bright, but if you need it in, term, in sunny daylight, then you will know to appreciate it. But then there's still the glossy screen. The screen is not super glossy, but it is still. As for the black levels, not super deep, but the good thing is nothing gets lost in the details. Everything gets nicely shown off. Contrast is very nice. Not maybe the best one out there, but still. Colors are quite accurate. Nothing to complain here. They look quite nice, accurate, vivid. And it's sometimes a little bit dull. And one thing I wanted to mention, I think 
the power management, the, the power saving option on this tablet, same as on the Lenovo Yoga 2 Pro already, is a little bit too aggressive because if you are on a white side for a while, on a black one, and then change to something white, colors wash out for a few seconds. And that is, if you jump between dark and bright a lot, a little bit annoying from time to time, but the display otherwise is great. The qualities are good. Also, the viewing angles, absolutely stable, stable no issues here at all. So let's check the sound now. And I have to show you one thing. We have the speakers here at the back, but you can't use the ones on the keyboard like this. You will have to turn it around because otherwise they just won't be enabled. So let's just do this and I will give you a demo of the sound right now and of both speakers. So let's start with the one on the tablet, which for some odd reason is blocked now by the hinge. So yeah, that's one thing you will have to live with. Okay. That is 100%. Okay. Okay. I think the good thing to say about it is it's a business device and the speakers don't have to be great because I'm just not super satisfied. The one on the tablet is not good at all very quiet no bass no mids and just a little bit not even clear highs so very disappointed with the tablet speakers the one on the keyboard dock is a little bit better it is a little bit louder still not loud enough sounds very muffled and you mostly have not really bass but and that mids that would be it the good thing is right i said on a business tablet we don't expect the best qualities here but it is definitely quite disappointing. So let's get to the performance and let me turn it, turn it around because it's a bit easier to show off like this. In terms of the SSD, absolutely amazing value. 600 read and 300 write is absolutely great. Nothing to say here bad. One thing I have to mention, a lot of people here are talking about thermal throttling on the 5Y71 core MCBU. The one thing I have to say is my results are following. If you do something on the 100% load, for a few seconds due to turbo boost, it is able to go up to 2.5 gigahertz and then it will jump between 1.75 to 1.9 gigahertz all the time. In video rendering, for some reason, it was 1.65 gigahertz, but that was under constant load. So if this already is the firmware throttling, I'm okay with it because I didn't really deep dig deeper into it because the thing is I never noticed any firmware throttling in normal use. Video editing worked, word processing worked, the browsing, everything worked here and that's also one thing I want to show you if you are for example in a modern UI app. As you can see here, super smooth, no issues here at all but maybe the best thing on this device is the browsing performance because if you go here and use Internet Explorer with a touchscreen enabled device this is extremely super smooth, but maybe the best thing here is if you use Chrome, which usually isn't known for a great performance, this is pretty much one of the best touchscreen experiences I've seen with Chrome. So this shows me that the performance is really great. And if we go, for example, into a PDF, the rendering is also very nice. As you can see here, you can switch between them. Rendering is very fast. No problems here at all. So I don't see the issues with the performance. The SSD is very fast and the normal day-to-day -day usage, word processing, browsing, is pretty much not distinguishable from an i5 I've used so far. I didn't notice anything. And I would almost say the browsing performance was better, maybe due to the quite aggressive turbo boost. But the experience was great and I don't matter if it terminal throttles or not, if everything I usually do works fine. So that's it for the performance. If you check the battery life now. Just real quick, my values, because I forgot them. One hour of charging the tablet gets you to 74%. One hour of charging the keyboard dock gets you to 80%. And both at one hour at 30 are fully charged. So the whole unit, I would say, let's say about three and a half hours. A little bit longer, because if you check the battery size, the battery itself isn't that big. We have 35 milliwatt hours on the tablet and 26 milliwatt hours on the keyboard dock side. So I've seen devices with this amount of battery charge maybe in two and a half, two hours. But okay, as for the battery life, 
here I'm really impressed. I got values of seven and a half hours, ten and a half, okay, eight and a half, five and almost six. That was, I think, almost only tablet use. The rest is with the combo. So ten hours, okay, thirty-six. There definitely went something wrong. Nine and a half. 8.30 and 11 hours. So this shows me I would expect people to get because I used about 70% of brightness pretty much all the time and I would expect people with a little bit of different usage because I noticed I drain my devices faster as all the others. So I would say you can expect at least 9 hours, 5 hours of the tablet and 4 hours additionally with the keyboard dock. So 9 hours in total. But most of the people I would expect to get at least 10 hours, maybe even 11 and 12 hours with lower brightness and maybe more doc, uh, word processing and more browsing and so on. If you do, of course, video, pro, uh, video rendering and so on, it will be less. But still, the battery life as it was, was very impressive. As for the heat and noise, the heat is no issue, at least for me. It got a little bit warm here on the back, that was pretty much it. But the one thing I have to mention, a bit negative, because you would expect Core M fanless, noiseless. Yeah, not so much because, yeah, and I hope the microphone will pick it up. There is this constantly noticeable coil whine. And usually on Ultrabooks, that's a quite common thing. You hear this a lot from the side of the from the part of the keyboard itself because maybe it's the battery. Because if the battery of the keyboard is dead, you hear nothing, then it is silent. But as long as there is juice within the keyboard, you will always hear this coil one that sounds like one of those old printers. It is maybe not super loud. In a normal office environment, you won't be able to hear it. But if I am, for example, like here in my office and type, I could even hear it from a normal position, almost one meter away. That's I have to mention though, I contacted the press agency from Lenovo. They told me they never heard of it. None of their reviewers before told them anything about that. I give the press agency the benefit of the doubt because they only can tell what the press agency says, uh, the reviewer said and other thing. But I highly doubt they didn't notice this on this review unit. Maybe it is really an issue of this particular unit, but it is obviously here. Let's assume it's not a standard issue because I haven't heard anything of that before. But yeah, keep this in mind. As for the software, there's not really much to tell. The only thing I want to mention as an advantage here is the really customizable software for the mouse because you could, on the trackpad because you could adjust pretty much everything you wanted and that is super versatile if you need the trackpad a lot. Otherwise, I mostly use my mouse and then it is fine. So, I said pretty much all I wanted, let's get to the recap. Design and build quality. We have a good amount of ports. Build quality itself could be a little bit better. It is a little bit too bandy and the flaps are a little bit loose. Also with 1.7 kilograms as a total package, it is just a bit heavy and also not really small because the Dell XPS 14 with 13.3 inches instead of here 11.6 is pretty much the same size but more mobile. The display. It is a little bit too cold calibrated and the power management is a little bit too aggressive but that can, I can get past that and the calibration once a little bit warmer is totally fine because the overall qualities were very good. The sound, yeah, the one on the tablet not good at all and the one on the keyboard dock I would say yeah acceptable but just about that but since it's a business device we can look past that as well the performance though is absolutely fine a very very fast ssd which is really nice to have these days and the good thing is the performance in day-to-day -day tasks was not distinguishable from an i5 but therefore this device was silent all the time besides the coil wine at least on my unit on the keyboard the tablet itself is silent battery life Charging times are a little bit longer than I would like to, but therefore the battery life is impressive. I would expect, let's say, an average of about 10 hours with the whole unit and 5 hours with the tablet is still more than solid and will get you through the busiest of business days without any issues. The software was stable, no problems here at all. We have a few little nice business additions and solutions, so this is nice to have. So, you know all the pros and cons. 
The only thing I have to say for a business device, I think it's maybe a little bit too heavy, not compact enough, but the quality for a business user should be there. There is also stylus support. I sadly didn't get to test that. They didn't send me that one out, but it should work quite good. I never heard anything bad about styluses on the Lenovo series. So this is a great bonus as well. So like I said, with all those modes, very versatile, overall good qualities. We have a good performance, great battery life, not a good sound, but a very qu high quality display once calibrated. And the only downside would be maybe the less portable design. Otherwise, I'm quite okay. It is a little bit pricey and if you maybe don't need all those modes, especially the tablet mode, you might maybe want to check the Lenovo ThinkPad Yoga, which for me sounds as the a little bit more appealing solution because you get just a little bit more of a robust package. But otherwise, this design does really nothing bad, but also not that exceptional, well, mostly due to the size and a few s smaller quirks. And it is quite expensive, so keep that in mind. But let me know what you think, and please rate, subscribe, and comment. Until next time, bye.